This then allows us to move to our final speaker in, on this panel, after which we will hopefully have the time for a few questions. Eric, I just failed uh, a test. I think I'm about to fail another one, but I will try. Eric Aroxalasi <laughs> is the CEO of TE Food International, GmbH, Alstad, Germany, since 2018. A Hungarian national, he has led a range of IT and traceability projects in Europe and beyond. His background is in civil engineering, and he speaks English, German, Italian, and Hungarian. We'll only be using English today. TE Food is a farm-to-table fresh food traceability ecosystem on blockchain, covering all logistics and food quality activities and data management of the supply chain. It provides cost-effective software and identification tools to make livestock and fresh food supply information transparent. Your biodata contains all the keywords for blockchain, transparent among them. Thank you so much. The floor is yours. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the invitation for this uh, briefing today. So uh, about T food, T food it's a food traceability system. We have uh, representatives in 16 countries already, and we have implementations in Asia, in Australia, United States, Canada, and Europe. We are working with Ocean together in five countries in in Europe and one country from Africa, from Senegal. This is the Ocean Retail Solution that we are doing for them. Uh, today, I don't want to talk as much about the food traceability, but it's a very connected uh, uh, topic that I would like to mention, and this is the animal epidemic issue and how to help, how to use the blockchain technology in this issue. This is my topic for today. Um, uh, some years ago, two years ago, it was an outbreak. It's a continuous uh, fight against the African uh, swine flu or fever all over the world. Last year, middle of uh, uh, last year in summer in China, it was a big outbreak. And that outbreak, uh, it's already uh, spread out not only in, in uh, Southeast Asian countries, but it's already in Europe. Uh, two, three weeks ago, we, uh, the South African uh, Republic of South Africa reported already uh, some cases, and experts are telling that uh, uh, this year it will has impact in, in the American continent as well. <coughs> so we can tell that uh, epidemic today, the African swine flu epidemic, it's a global issue. Uh, according to the to the reports today, so uh, only in Vietnam in the last four, three, four months, it was killed 1.2 million pigs because of the uh, swine flu. The the whole population in Vietnam is 30, 35 million pigs, and this is only in three months. So it's uh, it's uh, it's a big impact, and. Uh, and we think there is a lot of issues to be solved in the in the epidemic, uh, animal epidemic topic overall. The first thing, the most uh, most affected uh, sector of an uh, animal epidemic, it's it's the household farming or the small farming. The big industrial farms can protect themselves. They have good education. They have. Uh, relatively good biosecurity, but the small farming, the household farming, has lack of knowledge. Even the authorities, they don't know how many farms they have locally. In the emerging countries, it's a big issue about the livestock. Uh, the authorities, they don't have clear picture. And, um, and even uh, the missing education in the household farming or the small farming, it's a big issue in the ep epidemic and which is uh, very important, which is connected to the, to the livestock information. When, uh, when uh, an epidemic uh, outbreak is coming, then it's very, very imp important for the authorities to plan the in interventions and the actions to have a, a real-time online uh, knowledge about the status of the epidemic. And for that, it's very important to involve and, and uh, 
include uh, the household and small farming information as well. <clears throat> What we experienced uh, in terms of the uh, animal epidemic uh, in some countries, where we have already some use cases, the missing interoperability, that means missing interoperability between the authorities, the local authorities, because a lot of, a lot of uh, authorities, local departments are involved or impacted, affected by the, by the epidemic, agriculture, hills, trade, uh, uh, logistic even. So the veterinary authority, and they should have a very good cooperation, and that cooperation should be based on very good, uh, let's say, data knowledge. The, the actual status should be known for every stakeholder, and, uh, and they should work very, very good together, and they should work together with the industry itself, with the agriculture industry. And uh, this is not only a domestic issue because the virus doesn't see the borders. It's, it's a cross-border issue, so the countries should work together, and, uh, and even, even it should have somehow uh, a global, global solution, at least a global suggestion how to solve that issue when the, when the outbreak is coming. Uh, again, the biosecurity knowledge is very, very uh, low level on the household farming, so it's a very important part how to, how to pass over that knowledge, what to do, how to make the cooling itself, how to recognize the symptoms, what to do, and, uh, and which is additionally very important. When an outbreak is coming, for instance, in China or even Vietnam now, uh, uh, they are making the cooling, uh, and uh, after there is the farm, no pigs, let's say in case of the African swine flu, no pigs anymore. And the question is what, what they do after the, uh, the killing the animal, how they survive, which sector they are going to, to, uh, to look, chicken sector or any other agriculture sector, to be able to survive the, the household family, the family, the relatives. And it's, again, a very, very important global issue, global question, because uh, we heard already that in, because uh, last year it was the, the China outbreak, and a lot of household farming went over to the chicken sector, and already the bird flu is there. It's a question uh, when it's coming to the Southeast Asia and when it will be, again, a global issue, the bird flu. So the bio biodiversity, that means teaching the, the household farming which sector to choose after the epidemic outbreak. It's a very, very important part as well. And even the missing protocols, global missing protocols, how to, how to communicate, how to make the interoperability between the authorities, global authorities, the countries. So it's, it's a very big issue as well. And what we experienced, uh, not in Europe, but in, uh, in the emerging countries, the compensation rules. Uh, there are rules, there are legis some uh, legislations, but they are not really transparent. Nobody knows how and when they will get the money, the compensation, because they killed the animal. And, uh, and uh, the compensation rules uh, has uh, the, the missing transparency, the missing, let's say, payment tracking potential, and even the, the potential if the local economy has, has the potential to pay the compensation even. So, so a lot of, lot of issues to be solved. And uh, when we see uh, uh, how to jump to the next. Yes. So who are the stakeholders? When we are talking about blockchain technology and when we are talking about decentralization, uh, it's very, very important to define uh, the stakeholder structure uh, because, uh, because when we are talking about decentralization, we are decentralizing the information, the knowledge, the, the, the way of cooperation within the stakeholder structure. So that's why it's very important to identify in the animal epidemic case as well the stakeholders who are the stake most important stakeholders. The first one is, no question, the authorities. The authorities has to take care of the compensation. They have to know what to do. They have to plan the interventions, the actions. They have to follow the rules. They have to create the rules in case of the epidemic. They have to, to solve the food supply if there is a shortage. 
We, we had a talk with World Bank two, three weeks ago in Ukraine. It's a huge issue, the African swine flu as well. And, and there is a scenario when, when no food, because the, the, the pig is a strategic uh, food in Ukraine as well. And how to how to to solve the period when the, no chicken yet, but still the, the pigs are killed already. So the authorities has a lot of things to do, and the authorities should cooperate, should work together. They should share the information. The veterinarian, the police, the army, even in in a serious uh, epidemic outbreak, and even all the other authorities, health authority, trade authority. So the, that the stakeholder is not only one stakeholder. It's a, a lot of the different type of uh, authorities. The next one is the industry itself the agriculture sector, the farms. Not only the small farms, but the big farms are stakeholders in that uh, decentralized structure, let's say. They should know everything. They should uh, be informed. They should register and uh, report what they are doing. Uh, if they, if they uh, let's say, uh, uh, realize there is symptoms, they should, uh, uh, as fast as possible, inform the, the decentralized uh, system. And, uh, and even they should know the, exactly the compensation rules transparently. And they should have to, uh, the possibility to track the compensations, the payments, the subsidies. Because this is one of the most important motivation for the farmers to, to be a part of this decentralized structure. If they feel that the, uh, the let's say, the social environment, the, the the country the, or the, even the non-profit organizations are taking care of them, then they will cooperate. They will be motivated to work uh, in this issue. And the third uh, 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 and very important stakeholder is the supply chain, the food supply chain itself, and, uh, at, and uh, at, at, at the end of the supply chain, the consumer community itself. A lot of questions. Uh, everywhere because of the, for instance, in that case of the African swine flu, but when, when the bird flu is coming, more, more questions, food safety que questions, uh, uh, even economical impacts, uh, um, the meat will be much uh, more expensive. And, and even can they buy the meat or not? Can they eat pig or not, or pork or, or chicken later if, if uh, something happens? So the stakeholders structure, we can tell it's a global stakeholder structure. What we have developed, it's a, it's a very, very connected module to the traceability module, because the traceability, it's a very important part to, to control the, the epidemic issue. When we are talking about movements, uh, livestock movements, the traceability is the, uh, let's say, the first uh, 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 module or, or function feature, because we can we can track where the, the livestock went uh, from where and to where is going. But beside that, the, the livestock and the epidemic module that we have in, uh, implemented and developed has a farm registration module, a mobile-based farm registration module. It's very important that our solution is a mobile-based solution. The mobile client software is directly connected to the blockchain. And uh, the farmers are able to register themselves. They are able to give daily or daily more times reports about the livestock and even the death cases. They are able to, to choose the symptoms. And uh, there is a veterinary authority module in. Uh, um, uh, connected as well. So the data collection, it's a very important part. Collect data real time from the farm side, from the authority side in the decentralized blockchain structure. And beside that, which is very important, the education, biosecurity, as I mentioned before, the what to do after the epidemic, education, how, following the biodiversity rules, global biodiversity rules, the communication, communication between the the authorities communication towards the, the agriculture sector and even the consumer side as well. Report statistics and what we have, uh, we are working on, it's an AI, uh, let's say, prediction or trend analysis tool where we can, we can uh, predict with the AI <coughs> the direction, the speed, and even the economic impact of the actual, actual uh, actual uh, 
uh, epidemic, and the compensation module, and why we need blockchain uh, for this, because it's unmodifiable. So the, all the buzzwords that we know about the blockchain, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, connected to this issue, unmodifiable in terms of the data, the transactions, the events, even the rules, intervention rules and protocols, it's transparent, again, data, and even uh, in smart contract uh, um, represented uh, protocols and, uh, and interventions, and decentralized, of course. Uh, we have the food chain. The food chain is the main part of our blockchain. This is the blockchain part that we have developed. Uh, um, that system for the livestock and epidemic system, it's used now in Vietnam. We signed a contract uh, three days ago in Laos uh, to implement that system for the Laos solution. And we already sent through our imp local implementation partner that uh, possibility to the South African government to help there. And even we are in negotiations with the World Bank how to implement that solution in Europe, in Eastern Europe, and even other African and, and Latin American countries as well. Uh, one, one last sentence. The technology is not the final solution. It's a part of it. That epidemic issue is, uh, it requires uh, high-level cooperation, no question, but other, uh, uh, other side, motivation, education, regulatory side, so the government should, uh, local and the global cooperated government should work together to make the public communication and even the, the sample testing and so on. So thank you very much for, the, for your thank kind you Thank you. Eric, thank you so very much. And I'm really quite grateful to the organizers that once again, you have tapped into another aspect of the treatment of this issue, that of dealing with, the, with epidemics um, in the agricultural industry. Thank you for your exposition, Eric. Um, again, you have pointed out the importance of uh, certain um, activities that need to take place in those situations. You have drawn attention to the stakeholders. You have drawn attention to the benefit of different kinds of intervention and how blockchain technology has been used. And as you have acknowledged, as other speakers before you have done, that it is, it is only but part of the solution and not the entirety of it.